Welcome to this special edition WorkRight Toolbox Talk, Addressing Holiday Help. The holidays are here, and for many, this can be a time filled with joy and peace. But for others, this may be a very stressful season. Complicated family dynamics or financial stress can be intensified around the holidays. With seasonal depression in full swing and the end of the year being a time for reflection, December can be a somber or overwhelming time for many people. Anytime that we have an increase in stress, we activate our fight or flight nervous system. This system is designed to be on only during an immediate threat. Think running from a bear. In modern life, that bear is instead bills, family, or maybe your career. When your nervous system is chronically activated, we're still having the same acute stress hormones being pumped into our system all the time. And this is responsible for our increased heart rate and lack of focus. On the other hand, the rest and digest nervous system can't optimally function when our fight or flight system is turned on, and that causes the sleep and digestive issues that come with chronic stress. Over time, this leads to emotional and physical fatigue because our bodies are not designed to operate this way for long periods of time. Now consider work when a stressed employee is anxious, hasn't been sleeping or eating well, and maybe has a lack of focus. This can be a major safety risk. All of these issues manifest in musculoskeletal aches and pains, and these end up in the wellness center, medical facility, or with safety professionals. This means that we have a prime opportunity to intervene and positively affect someone in distress. By building relationships with employees over time and being a safe resource to talk to, we can make a difference in the mental health state of a distressed employee. This is a common problem, with 41% of U.S. adults describing that their stress levels increase during the holidays. But sometimes we can feel absolutely helpless when faced with a distressed employee, friend, or family member. Here are some actionable ways that you can help those around you. First, always be an empathetic listener. While it may feel natural to try to cheer someone up, we're not trying to contradict what they're saying or change somebody's outlook here. The goal is to lend a compassionate ear, and it's more effective when you let someone talk rather than trying to have the exact right thing to say. Be aware of your body language as well. You should remain relaxed and make comfortable eye contact. Most of the time, this is exactly what a person can need without the situation requiring further action or medical care. When the conversation is over and the person is no longer in immediate distress, tell them that you'll check in later and actually follow up on that. Sometimes we come across an employee that's having an active stress-related event, like a panic attack, flashback, or maybe they're just in a very negative headspace. We can feel pretty helpless in the face of these mental health concerns, and having a plan before we have to assist an employee is essential. Breathing and grounding techniques can be effective to increase the activity of the rest and digest nervous system while decreasing the fight-or-flight response. Diaphragmatic breathing is our first technique to influence our nervous system. Calmly instruct the employee to slowly inhale through the nose for a count of four. They'll hold their breath for four seconds and then exhale through pursed lips for eight seconds. Finally, we'll hold for another four seconds. Then you'll repeat this cycle. You'll want to try for three to four cycles of this. Grounding techniques aim to bring you from the threat of our fight or flight scenario back to our immediate safe surroundings. We use the five senses to ground ourselves back into reality instead of a spiral of worry, panic, anxiety, or flashbacks. For this technique, you'll have the employee name five things that they can see. Be detailed here. I see a small red bucket, or I see my bright green socks. Next, have them name four things they can touch. Okay, I'm touching the cold sidewalk or my soft jacket. Next, three things that they can hear. I hear traffic or the air conditioning. Two things that they can smell is next. So for example, I smell my laundry detergent on my shirt. And finally, one thing that they can taste. Maybe it's a drink of water or a breath mint. By the time the exercise is complete, many people find themselves in the present, not worrying about the threat that got them into the spiral in the first place. These can be some very effective techniques to help you feel empowered as a safety professional, a friend, a family member, or a clinician for someone in need. Or perhaps we can even use them on ourselves as we make it through the holiday season together.